Welcome, I'm David Geiger. Iowa hopes to help and expand its local meat lockers. Over the past few years, the Iowa Department of Agriculture has launched programs to expand capacity of local meat lockers or buy equipment. Some have funding through the CARES Act. In 2020, there was an agreement with the U.S. Department of Agriculture to allow state-inspected meat products across state lines, allowing Iowa meat producers to have more markets. But Iowa Secretary of Agriculture Mike Negg says locker owners still face a labor shortage and recently put together a task force to figure out ways to help. How do you get somebody in the locker um, as an apprentice or as an intern to work alongside folks and learn the business as they go and, uh, and hopefully then pursue a career in the, uh, in the industry? And then we looked at the educational uh, gaps that might be out there and we think there is an opportunity for a community college to step in and create a program uh, to provide some skills for folks looking to get into this space. Looking into the future, Neg says labor will also be a widespread issue for Iowa agriculture and highlighted the need to find laborers for the industry, pointing out aspects of Governor Kim Reynolds' plan for Iowa that could help agriculture, specifically adding to competitiveness of Iowa products, tax changes, and expanding renewable fuels in the state. The trade is important. And what can we do to, again, whether it's renewable fuels or connecting uh, farms to schools in terms of uh, local foods or whether it's expanding meat processing. Those are all doing things that expand markets for farmers. Of course, we've got to continue to focus on natural resources and, and improving water quality and soil health and, and, and what's the tie to carbon and, and how does that all work together. Halfway through the week and a good boost in grains, our market analyst Dan Huber has more. Well, we've got a pretty nice little rally going here at this point. It really started yesterday, first in wheat, kind of blood over the corn, helped lift the beans off their lows. They didn't get actually close higher, but they kind of made up for lost time today. So beans, as I said, couldn't quite close higher yesterday, but, you know, kind of a disappointing performance last week. So we've turned around and made up for that at this point in time. So nothing really tremendously fresh in the news. Actually, South American weather has improved significantly. So uh, that's not a stimulating factor. So I think you've got to lay a lot of this back at inflationary talk and you don't want to be kind of long the commodities again for uh, just in case that, that boom really hits and do so a lot of probably a lot of fun money flowing back into the commodities here at this point cattle good uh, good response higher here today pushed higher in fact uh, up to the uh, the highest levels we have seen since really opening the beginning of the year so uh, a little more optimistic tone there so it looks like you know we we should have uh, the wind at the uh, the bull's backs here at this point for for a few more days of gain at least. And you may not get carried away, but uh, at least it looks a little bit better there. You know, hogs had two good solid uh, days of gain the last couple of days. Haven't really been able to extend it higher just yet, and that's pretty typical in the pattern of hogs here recently. You know, we seem to get two to three days up, then we back off for two to three days. So, uh, you know, not that we're going to fall apart from here, but you know, wouldn't be surprised to see prices uh, back down here for maybe into the end of the week yet. That's all I have for the Agribusiness Report today. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next time. We have our stories online. Head over to who13.com, click news, and then agribusiness.